We have less than 15 minutes now to the end of the trading day, and those trade concerns continue to rattle the nerves of investors. Expecting an announcement after the close of markets from President Trump on the China situation. Let's get some perspective now. We're joined by the co-founder and chief market strategist at Path Trading Partners, Bob Iacchino. Good to see you again, Bob. Good to be here, Greg. How are you? Not too bad. So here's a little bit of uh, late day drama. We've been talking about China and the U.S. all day. <laughs> now we have uh, the president saying he's making an announcement after the close. What is uh, what's the concern, I guess, the chief concern among investors in all this? Well, there's been several stories citing the comments of President Trump lately as somewhat undermining the talks, the invitation from U the U.S presumably the executive branch, Steve Mnuchin specifically to China to resume talks. So this is what I'm telling you right now, it's not news. And that's kind of been the conversation. I guess the announcement of this announcement kind of gave the market some jitters. It could be President Trump clarifying that he's in charge of the situation. It wouldn't be unlike him to do so. The announcement we got earlier today that the tariffs he's looking to implement in this round is 10 percent was a little bit of a positive in my view because, I mean, it's, it's significant, but it's also kind of a rounding error when you consider the previous threats of 25 percent tariffs on basically 500 billion in goods, which is the entirety of China exports uh, to the U.S. So the 10 percent number on another 200 billion, I saw that as a little bit of a positive in a very negative situation for equities. But you saw the acceleration. I think the nerves of the market are what's he going to say? He's known to be sort of the rambunctious part, the bad cop part of these negotiations. And I'm just kind of hoping he's more tempered. When I think about the uh, trade relationship between Canada and the United States, and we have spent a lot of time at BNM Bloomberg, a lot of Canadians have spent a lot of time trying to figure out what Donald Trump are they getting? Are they getting the, the art of the deal uh, character who likes to come in with the bluster and you end up somewhere that's uh, not too far from where you were? Or are we getting someone different now that he's in the White House? Uh, this, this seems to be the tough thing to, get, to overcome. Where is he headed with all this? You know, the situation with Canada, I see it a little bit differently. I think you're always getting the art of the deal. You're always getting the bad cop from the public comments and the tweets with President Trump. Now, the U.S. is viewed as having backed off a little bit on some of the hardline things with Canada, specifically the dairy tariffs and things like that. But here's what I see with the Canadian situation. It went bad when Justin Trudeau publicly stood up to him. Um, Europe hasn't done that, and those trade talks are seen as going a little bit more smoothly. But with Canada, he's getting a lot of pressure from his own party as the midterms approach to kind of bend on some things, and I think he will. I really think we're going to see an announcement sometime later this week that Canada, Mexico, and the U.S. are done. I really believe that. I'm not hearing anything. I don't have any kind of information to that effect. It's just the way that I'm reading the overall signs. Uh, but China... I think that's going to go badly. I think it's going to drag on, and I think that has the potential to bring the S&P down anywhere from 5 to 7 percent from where it sits as of Friday's highs. 5 to 7 percent. So if things drag out with China, you think, how, and how long would it take for us to see? Is this a matter of days or weeks for a pullback of that magnitude? Probably, uh, probably about a week to 10 days. And the reason I say that is because it's going to be, it's going to hinge on an event, right? Hopefully that event is not this afternoon, but it has the potential to be that event. And I think equities are trading like that. When you have the president coming out, he could be coming out to, to say something as blunt as, I don't really care how these talks go. They have to bend on X, Y, Z. China is not going to take too kindly to that as your prime minister, Justin Trudeau, didn't. So I, I think that, China takes these things a little bit more to heart from a civic pride kind of a uh, perspective, whereas Canadians are a little bit more Western in that. They kind of just go, okay, fine, We're, we don't agree with that, but they're still willing to come to the table. I don't know that that's going to be the case with China. Now, given all this is our backdrop, where would you put money to work in this market? Well, a couple of things. We're obviously looking for things that aren't necessarily affected by trade. We recommended to clients uh, to get into Norwegian cruise lines on Thursday because they had a significant dip during the last hurricane season. We think we're much better. They are much better prepared to manage that. So we put that recommendation out. And then also we're staying away from sort of the big money center banks because if you get a global downturn, 
based off of the two largest economies fighting and you get interest rates higher, I don't think that's going to be good for the big money center banks. We bought peso and we bought Canadian dollar as well about 10 days ago, and we're still in those two trades. Those still are performing well. That's in antis anticipation of a NAFTA-like deal actually being put into place. Lastly, I want to ask you how much attention have, had, have you been paying to the emerging markets and how concerned are you that it becomes more than just an emerging market problem? Well, quite a bit. I mean, the contagion itself is going to hit Europe a lot, a lot harder and first. And that's one of the things that we actually like right now. We like the euro. Uh, we like European equities uh, quite a bit, considering the progress that's been made. So we're watching it. We're not in emerging markets, so it's not something that's hurt us. But seeing the emerging market equities go into a bear market, emerging market currencies down on average about 10 percent, China kind of fits in there. So they're one of the drivers of that. And the contagion going to Europe has me a little bit worried. All right, Bob, as always, thanks for your time and for your insight.